fascinating and interesting session. I've struggled so much to put this together. There's always complaints. Oh, telecom companies, big banks, they're not working with startup. Uh, and, uh, and the telcos are complaining, startups in Tanzania, it's a headache to work with them, dealing with them is a challenge. How can we get to these guys? Where are they? So I'd like to welcome on stage um, Mr. Grayson, Julius. I've been knowing Grayson for the past seven, eight years as an entrepreneur. We started struggling together. <laughs> From Buni, he has failed with so many startups. I don't know, Africa's fashion, I don't know, so many startups. But right now, maybe he's trying to survive with a company called IPF Software. Um, something you don't know about us entrepreneurs, we close and open businesses every day. So <laughs> if I start to mention my startup, you will laugh a lot. I had tech box, I had uh, great food, I had Mabeli 255, all dead and gone long time ago. So uh, without wasting time, I'd like also to welcome Pavan Ramzan from Tigo, COO. Can we please... Uh, Craft for Pavan, why is not working? We want to see more collaboration between startups and corporate companies, specifically bank, no, specifically telecom companies which are taking a huge chunk of our ecosystem. So how can we make it happen? Yes, we are seeing things here and there, so we just want to hear what really we need to do so that can happen. Welcome. All right, uh, good afternoon everyone. So if, if you may notice, I am on the AI side and he's on the human side, so just uh, like, here's, here's a hand. All right, so yeah. Uh, thank you, Jumane, for, 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 for this great opportunity and uh, Pavan, uh, thank you uh, for, for joining me here. So uh, the, the, it, it, great question, Jumane, uh, and it is obvious, uh, everyone, everyone, uh, it, it, the story I've been told uh, since uh, SPAC 2016, I've seen uh, these, these, these fireside chat between startup and, and corporate. And, uh, and uh, the, the, the most common thing that comes up is the middle management, the, the, the bureaucrats and the red tapes that, uh, that, uh, that um, are blocking the startups and, uh, and, uh, and, and the corporate. So this, the, the, the the CEO or the C position in the startup uh, will need to penetrate to get to the C position uh, in the corporate, and it's always challenging. Gets to get to the uh, head of department, head of department, the salespeople, the salespeople. You don't get to penetrate to, to, to the to the to the to the to the end. And uh, now a, a question to to Pavan to to just to 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 to, to make it, to make this even interesting is. Uh, as, as, as Tigo, uh, have, have you guys have any existing uh, relationship so that we, we get a bit of, bit of context with, with people, any relationship between Tigo and uh, any Tanzanian local startup? I know you, you joined Tigo recently, 2018, December? Yeah, so uh, for, for your time, any, any, any awareness, any, anything you know uh, in terms of? All right, thank you, Grace. Thanks, Grace, and uh, thanks, Jumaini, for the introduction. Just for the crowd who don't know me, my name is Pavan Ramdani. I'm the Chief Business Officer for Tigo but I've been with the group uh, for, for about five years. Mm. And I was based in uh, the UK for about four years, where I saw a new startup who wanted to work with Millicom every week. Every week we were, we were exposed to startups either coming from incubators, uh, investors in the group, or people who just heard about our business and thought they could make an impact in Africa. Now, unfortunately, every startup I saw was never an African one. It was a European startup who thought they could scale their solution in Africa, and localize it and you know drive uptake of their service. So when I came to Tanzania in January, uh, I found out exactly what you guys are saying is that for startups to work with corporates and telcos, it's extremely difficult. And the reason why is that you know a corporate sales engine and a corporate environment is very much built you know upon bureaucracy, complexity, uh, compliance issues. You know, as a company, our parent company is is, uh, is listed on the Nasdaq. So the amount of compliance we have to uh, go through just to onboard a supplier or a partner is astronomical. And this is why startups who had worked with sort of telcos before and banks before just couldn't get any further. You know, we had worked on our Twende app for sort of taxi ride hailing. Mm -hmm. We had worked on uh, Tigo Backup, which were, which were things that were, you know, I would say uh, inspired by 
local entrepreneurs. And once they came on board, they found that to scale the business and really get the corporate's attention, it was extremely difficult. Just because we don't have processes to cater for this kind of, uh, this kind of relationship. So when I joined, the first thing we did was, we thought to ourselves, how do we encourage more startups to work with Tigo? And the first thing we designed was a separate process for onboarding of, of startups. So normally when you come to Tigo as a supplier or, or a partner, you go through this exhaustive due diligence that's necessary for us, but doesn't make much sense for a startup who doesn't have three months of bank state, or sorry, three years of, uh, of bank statements showing profitability and business revenue generation. They don't have all the documents that we need from directors uh, who take on liability. So we've incubated a brand new process and a brand new system to onboard entrepreneurs and startups, which will sort of make things much smoother and much easier to work with Tigo. I think the second thing that's also important is that any large organization that's driven by uh, a responsibility for shareholder returns has clear KPIs from the very beginning of what we need to drive. Mm -hmm. And that strategy is set the year before. When startups come to the table and they are introduced into the ecosystem formally, um, sometimes you know, f I, I find that founders are very reliant on the corporate to drive their business. Mm -hmm. And we're focused on very different things. So while we would love to see you succeed, we really expect that the hustle and the evolution of your business comes from the startup itself and doesn't rely heavily on the corporate. What we're able to do is, we're able to unlock a massive customer base for you. We're able to unlock the best and widest sales and distribution network. And on top of that, on a daily basis, we're building more infrastructure that can deliver your service. So the idea is that while we bring all of this to the table and while we streamline our processes to make doing business a lot easier with us, we really want to see entrepreneurs step up and really take the hustle onto themselves and drive the success from, you know, the image, in the image of the business they want to build. Mm. Okay, interesting. So you, you mentioned, you mentioned uh, to, to, to two local uh, Tanzanian startup, uh, Twente and Tigo Backup. Uh, before we go to, to the Europe, uh, like wha what's happened, because it's a lot happening there and you have experience uh, in that space, but uh, what, what have they done different uh, because I know there are couple who try to get to work with, with, with any corporate. Now, now we are talking about these red tapes and Tigo just being the victim here, but I think it, it's cutting cross to, from government to, to any other corporate. So uh, what, what did these two, two, two startups do uh, well that we, we, we can learn? Is it, is it their idea? Is so cool you liked it? Is it like they, they followed proper procedures? Because uh, wh wh what did they do better uh, to, to get to penetrate for you guys to get to work so that everyone here, um, um, there are startups yeah. here, they need to, to get to, to, to that level. What, what do they do well? So uh, I think that's a great question, Grayson. And I think um, Tigo's not the victim here. You know, Tigo, I think, is a, has always been a champion of the people, a challenge in the market. We love to disrupt. We lead the digital lifestyle in terms of new and in innovative services. But I agree with the private equity panel that it's all about the people. You know, when you have very passionate, very knowledgeable, and very well-networked entrepreneurs coming to the table who knock on the door constantly and just don't go away, those are the people that we love to work with. It's not about the person who has the most developed product uh, or the most secure or scalable code. Not at all. You know, we, we can help with that. But it's about people who don't give up, who have, you know, a desire to solve critical issues that are holding Tanzanians back, and that also just, you know, themselves every day come to the office and wait there just to see the right people. Those are the people that I love to work with and that Tigo has given massive support to. And I think, you know, um, a recent example has been uh, Tigo's relationship with Seedspace. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, um, if you haven't uh, heard about Sp uh, Seedspace and Seedstars, this is a massive fund that, you know, invests heavily into emerging markets uh, and they've done really well with lots of startups, but they also invest in infrastructure in the country. And they've built a fantastic facility uh, on sort of New uh, Bagamoyo Road, which is Silicon Dar, of course. And they've, you know, created a place for people to work in, they've created a hotel, and they've tried to bring in partners ready to drive uh, the scaling up and the incubation of, uh, of startups. And when they came to the table showing us so much of investment and so much skin in the game, I think it took us about a week to sign the deal and to become a, a goal partner. Oh. So now we'll be sponsoring startups, we'll be sponsoring cohorts to sort of compete locally, internationally, with no sort of uh, hidden agenda from Tigo. You know, a lot of the time, the corp uh, big corporates make the mistake of saying, these are three big sort of burning issues, we'll only invest in startups that go after that. 
And we try to, I would say in a bad way, it happens in corporate, we try to kill creativity and innovation. And we try to sort of focus it only on the lens that we're looking through. Uh, and what I love about Seed Start and Seed Space is that it's a free space. Entrepreneurs solving real problems and getting investment to follow their dreams, not to just solve problems for the corporate. Mm. Um, so I think, you know, uh, I mean, t you know, just to get back to your point, Tigo is far from the victim. I think, you know, we're on the front foot now and we're looking at ways of how we get closer to startups mm. and how we encourage this development. You know, um, it's no secret to investors in the room, to politicians, that uh, the sort of success of um, our economy in Tanzania and the development of a sustainable economy is based on how well we support SMEs and entrepreneurs and how well we can financially include them. And, you know, operators and banks and politicians and the government have, you know, so much to play in that, such a big role to play in that. So, yeah, I think, you know, we're on the front foot as, okay. as Tigo. Okay. So, uh, I heard a point uh, you mentioned uh, that uh, with seed space, they came to you with a uh, they, they had done something already, they, they had attraction, they've already done the investment. It, does it, is, is that what it takes uh, for, for me with my startup to, to, to get to work with you? Should I, should I have like, a, uh, like a, a, a 5,000 users or something uh, already making traction? W w is that what it takes? C can they can just come with a, with a concept note and like, guys, uh, this, this will change Tanzanians' life. Uh, and with your, with, your, with your customer base, let's do this together. Mm -hmm. w can, can, they, can, can did that work, work in that way? So I think, you know, again, it's a very good question, but I think, you know, in terms of uh, being pre-revenue or sort of post-revenue, mm -hmm. if, if I can put it that way, I think that's more a relevant question for investors. So investors are very keen to see, have you deployed your model? What success have you had? How many times have you, have you changed? Have you pivoted? Are you open to that kind of environment? But for Tigo, I think we see ourselves more as an enabler. So when you have very early stage startups, what, what we like to see is we like to see them going through incubation programs. And I think Sahara Ventures, Startup Bootcamp, Seed Stars, these are the guys who have the right skill set and the right setup to take you know, high caliber, high potential early stage startups through an investment readiness program. You often find, I think uh, the previous panel spoke about it as well, that you often find people with uh, you know, very strong technical skills, very strong people skills, but suddenly don't have any financial skills, right? And they don't know how to financially sort of uh, control and manage their business. And these things can be addressed through incubator and acceleration programs, which can take uh, you know, journeys that would normally take 18 months and condense them into three months. And that's what they're really geared for. So when we look at startups, and when, when, whether it's post-revenue or pre-revenue, we'd like to at least see, have you been through an incubator program, and what has been the result and the outcome of that? Are you open to change? Do you listen to advice? You know, or are you just fixated on my product as a solution for all the sort of problems and I'm not gonna change? Uh, and the incubator problems, are, sorry, the incubator programs go a long way into solving that for us. But for us, you know, it's, it makes little difference if you're post-revenue or pre-revenue. We're more excited about the people, the passion, and the impact that the idea could have. Okay. Wow. Nice. By the way, congratulations on, on working with Seed Space. I think, I, I think in Thank my opinion, it's a, it's a good space to start with, uh, with the incubation and, and these hubs. Uh, so you're, 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 you're tapping at the right uh, angles, I would say. Uh, so with the existing relationship with, uh, with, uh, with the startups you're working with, yeah. uh, you know, these things uh, are like marriages, you know, like uh, conflicts are there and uh, challenges are there. So what, what, uh, what would be the, like, the key uh, highlights uh, on, in terms of challenges that uh, you've come across without mentioning any names uh, sure. uh, that we can, we, can, we can learn all of us, like, uh, yeah. Okay, so I mean, I think, again, it's a very, uh, very relevant question for the startups in the room and also for the investors, I think, as, as well. Uh, you know, um, I think one of the ways that Tigo can help startups do more is by unlocking more APIs. Uh, you know, I mean, we have, uh, we have great systems and we have millions of customers and we have uh, systems that support a lot of innovation. But we've only made available and exposed very few APIs for very basic services. And the reason why we haven't unlocked deeper control of that is because of something that uh, a previous panel spoke about as well is that Tanzania has a lot of potential but you know the number of really uh, skilled developers who build secure code and scalable code is quite limited, mm -hmm. I would say. And sometimes these people go into companies such as yours and become contractors. Mm -hmm. And they focus less on their innovation and more on you know, doing business for others. 
Um, so that's one way I think it's been a barrier where we've started with startups and we haven't seen the level of expertise deepen mm. and widen. And therefore we have hesitation in expanding what we uh, sort of allow and expose to them. The second thing I would say is that we've never had a framework internally to support entre entrepreneurs. Mm. We've always had a framework to sort of support partnership and we've done well with MasterCard and Uber and you know, very large companies, but we've never had one for startups. And you know, like I was saying earlier, you know, startups require something completely different. It's like building businesses within businesses or partnerships within partnerships. Uh, and we haven't, we haven't done that, right? Um, when you talk about incubating startups or bringing them into your ecosystem, these things need to be long-term objectives of the corporate. And these, you know, these indicators and these uh, sort of <laughs> metrics have to be distilled throughout the organization from C-level to all the way down to our analysts who have a vested interest in seeing startups succeed inside Tigo, and we've never done that. So I would say it's a, it's a combination of problems that exist from the way startups operate and the way corporates operate in, in Tanzania. And if there's gonna be real synergy found, then we both have to be open to change and to creating a, an environment that's conducive for growth. And, and I do agree, I think, you know, uh, I mean, the startups I've seen in Tanzania are, you know, in some cases, far better than what I've seen in the UK for the last four years. And the reason is because you're on the ground, you know exactly what the problems are. If you're in Mafinga or in Songhea, you know exactly what the distribution problems are in those areas. And the people who create solutions are the ones who are closest to the problems. Uh, and so I, I, I don't think there's any issue here with the amount of creative people or creative solutions coming out of startup. But I think the problem exists with how do we put them in front of the right people who make decisions and can take their business forward. Nice, nice. So, nice. Uh, as a startup, I'm taking that as a positive thing we are doing. Uh, but you, you mentioned like there's there's no proper framework for uh, in the corporate level and at Tigo uh, in in supporting these startups uh, based on the challenges you mentioned. Uh, I know we're trying. You know, as yeah. a startup, we're trying. But wh what are you guys doing about that? Should you not build that framework, or are you thinking at at your level? Uh, are you even thinking on on building that framework? Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean. Uh, Personally, I run Tigo Business, and Tigo Business is our, our enterprise arm. So we look after corporates, SMEs, joint ventures, and very large partnerships. And for me, you know, personally, there's no way for us to grow our business and become more innovative unless we work more with startups. So it's, it's one of my key KPIs mm. of how do we incubate and how do we drive success of, of startups with Tigo. But I think we've taken the first step in creating you know, a, a special onboarding process for startups that cuts across procurement, finance, revenue assurance, and our legal teams. Once we get you on board, then it's up to us to work with, with sort of uh, incubators like SeedStars of how do we put, uh, put together a, pre, uh, a framework for you and a plan that has very clear uh, sort of deliverables and milestones for you to unlock a long-term relationship with us. So those are things that we are working on currently. In addition to that, uh, you know, <laughs> it's a bit sad, but sometimes when you look at um, hiring innovation specialists, and it's, a, it's such a, you know, a bastardized word, innovation, especially in telco. But when we advertise for innovation spe specialists, most of the time, we always see the same CVs, the same people who've done one or two things in large corporates, but are very tunnel visioned. And the people I would love to see applying or actually being a part of this are the startups, because that's where the real innovation is. That's where, you know, you have the unbridled opportunity to just go out there and be creative. Um, so what we're doing is that we're trying to work with seed stars and, and similar organizations of putting together programs that go beyond hackathons. You know, we want to have long-term programs where we say, for example, top 10 brightest startups in Tanzania who are focused on tech, we have a problem with distribution in deep rural areas. We can't get our, you know, we can't get our services out there fast enough. Can you find a way to, of doing that for us? Mm -hmm. um, and the idea would be then to the winning solution to come on board as a supplier for Tigo. Not as, thanks for the solution, here's some cash, and we go and run and do it. No, mm. we want you to come on board and help you scale. Mm. Um, and, and, and similarly, I think what needs to be done is that, you know, corporates need to not give out specific projects to startups, but bring them on board and help them, uh, sort of in, encourage them to be sort of a, a part of the top level thinking, and not just the, like the bottom level execution. I think, uh, uh, from a personal perspective, you know, I've been working for 10 years now, maybe across 20 African markets, starting in South Africa and going also into Europe. And what I found is that as time goes on, 
um, as a corporate employee, I become really good at execution, but my level of creativity has become very uh, sort of myopic. And what that means is that I know how to innovate within certain areas within Telco, but sometimes I'm not looking at the broader picture, which can have massive impact on, on, on uh, um, my industry. And that's where startups play a massive role, is that they cut across all verticals and bring massive, massive insights and ideas to the table that many of us aren't looking at. Mm. All right, all right, cool, thank you. Um, one, one of the one of the challenge uh, that are uh, facing uh, local 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 startups uh, is is exposure. Uh, I would say uh, in working with corporate, like we're missing exposure because you, you started here. Someone studied at University of Dod uh, of Dodoma or Dar es Salaam, then uh, mm -hmm. went to Buni. From Buni, came up with a product and all that. Now so suddenly needs to, to work with uh, with uh, with with a, with a corporate. So. It's, it's, it's obvious, like uh, exposure is one of, of the challenge. Yeah. Uh, now, you being uh, you working with uh, with uh, with uh, with Milcom uh, from from Europe, South Africa, uh, what other what what other challenges? Uh, I mean, no challenge. Like, what other other thing that uh, the, the startups in the international market are doing that we local uh, the local startups in Tanzania are not doing uh, that we can learn from them? So, um, so I would say two things on that. I mean. The first thing is more about the more about the startups. I think, you know, Tanzania has really good incubator programs, you know, and they deploy best practice from really large organizations and large uh, uh, incubators like the sort of the Y Combinator startup bootcamp and Seek Stars, and they localize it quite well. But as I've gone around to different demo days, I find that sometimes I see the same pool of startups pitching, and their pitches haven't pivoted or haven't been they haven't taken on the feedback from mentors, and they just you know. They're so fixated on doing it one way. So I think it's very important that startups listen to these mentors and listen to these incubator programs and you know change because we all have to change. And sometimes the thing we built at the very start, we don't have to be married to it. You know, it's about taking advice, learning from others, and then changing and tweaking in a way that makes sense, create, uh, creates value, and gets people excited about it. The second thing I would say is more on the corporate side. You know, when I was in London and when I was in, uh, in South Africa. When a corporate was a part of an incubator program or part of an event, um, it was a, a massively vested interest. And what that meant was that the, the, the corporate was involved from ideation to execution to post-execution review and all the way to sort of um, to funding and mentorship. And what I found in Tanzania is that, quite sad, we let startups down and we let the programs down because we get involved, we sponsor some uh, uh, a few events or a few programs, we make some noise, we use it as, uh, for great PR exposure, and it dies there. Mm. There's no continuity. So, you know, for, for there to be, uh, I would say, capitalization on exposure, uh, for, which basically means something comes out of that exposure, s corporates need to have a vested interest mm. and need to be tied into a program that has a, pl uh, um, that has a plan that, has them, that sees them involved through every stage. You know, it's no point just being up here and sort of making noise and getting people excited and then not following through. I, I can't think of anything more disheartening. You know, um, it's the same for me in the sort of corporate sphere. If I have a great idea and if I go to my board and they, and they sort of love it and they throw cash at me and then three months down the line, no one else is involved and no one is, is, uh, is supporting me, that kills all the passion in me and kills all the drive that I had to see this through to uh, success or through to uh, fruition and I think it's exactly the same for startups if it, you know it needs to, exposure is good but beyond exposure needs to be sustainability and support okay nice uh, not not to be selfish uh, and I still need to work with this guy so I won't kill him so much <laughs> uh, I, I will allow two questions from from the floor uh, I know there are startups who are like Grayson ask this and uh, I, I can't hear right now so uh, do you want to, there's a question there, just, just two questions, then uh, we're wrapping this up. Um, thank you very much. My name is Francis Akeng. I, I'd like to take you up a little bit on um, your comments. Nice presentation so far. Uh, apparently, um, my thoughts is apparently looking at the African market and uh, talking about innovation, which is more like an umbrella word and uh, in technology. and. Um, Listening to you, apparently your organization has taken a whole lot of steps in trying to see how to uh, create some kind of inclusive uh, strategy to bring in some innovations to the table or support startups. 
But um, th the concern I have is that most organizations like yourself um, profile your risk in such a way that you don't want to carry any risk. And the reason for that to a large extent is purely because you have used the framework of a structured market in an unstructured market. Africa is pretty very unstructured, let's be very realistic. When it comes to technology, we borrowed it. So we can't expect to ramp. We can't expect uh, uh, innovators or startups to have all that it takes because to align all the docs in a row to fit into your framework or qualify, apparently is almost like gonna be an impossible task for most startups. The reason why it's very easy for you to align with the likes of uh, Uber and all the big brands. But to solve an African problem, you need startups that actually uh, deal with issues of Africa on a daily basis, on the back of which they begin to think of how to solve those problems, creating business models, using technology as a framework, which ordinarily the counterpart sitting in structured market in the west of the world will certainly not feel that concern because it's not in that geography. So my thought is this, that organizations like yourselves, like a telco, because the truth is, telco is almost like an arm of the government. You guys are gonna be here for infinito, as it were, because you can't really think of a world today without telco mm -hmm. in any market. Like you're talking about health, you're talking about uh, the legislative systems. So you have to come down from the high horse to the point where you try to understand the local market, understand the local concerns, and then lower your bar or framework of risk analysis and risk tolerance so that you can possibly embrace them in a little bit more. And this is actually what I would possibly uh, throw in more like an advice in, in all the commentaries that I've had here. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Well, fantastic, Francis. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, Francis, just to you know, respond to that, even though it's not a question, I think everything you've said, I completely agree with. Uh, and I, I think I kind of echoed those, uh, those sentiments earlier on. You know, um, when it comes to you know, African solving African problems, I completely agree, because if you look at uh, the UNDP's Human Development Index, which looks at you know, the level of healthcare, infrastructure, education in a country, you usually find African countries in the bottom 50. And the reason is because we haven't developed as fast as we should have for the problems we have. However, you know, like a telco who develops structure for the infrastructure for the future, you know, just the internet or access to information can alleviate a, a lot of those barriers. And so we're very much committed to, to that change and being a part of that change. But like I said, I do agree with you, you know, our level of risk is not from an investment perspective, like the private equity panel, but it's more across, you know, a supply chain. As an international company that's listed on international stock exchanges, you know, we're subjected to SOX compliance, uh, Sarbanes-Oxley, which one aspect looks at your, your entire supply chain in a, in a tier way, in a, in, a, in a tiered fashion. And if at any point it's compromised or not following the sort of guidelines, directly impacts the company on a shareholder stock market level. So what we've done is to directly address that is create a separate onboarding process, which is kind of ring fenced for startups with very risk, mitiga uh, risk mitigating factors that doesn't put a startup through the same due diligence as an established multinational or even uh, large enterprise locally. And by doing that, not only do we control risk, protect shareholders as well, but we also drive the uptake of startups and the encouragement of them to uh, sort of grow and succeed. So I completely agree, and I do a, a you know, I'm very proud that Tigo is doing something in that image and building in the light of what you've said. Thank you so much, Grayson. Thank you so much, Pavan. This is a very interesting conversation. Please, Pavan, don't run away like really quick. There's a lot of entrepreneurs here who love to work with you. Um, yeah, I know your API is out, but there's a lot of work that needs to be done with your API so that it can be in a such a way that most of these guys can be able to use. It's an area where I did my research on. My thesis on, was on how startups work with corporates, especially on open APIs. So please try to do a bit of work there. 
there's a lot of interesting learnings uh, from Safaricom in Kenya. They've actually created a sandbox which give each and every procedure on how startups can be able to integrate with their systems. There's a lot of learnings. So we are all learning, and this has been a very good learning platform. That being said, thank you so much. But before you go, I'll have to show you the session that will be happening in the afternoon. Ashish.